you'd like to, please subscribe. It helps me out a lot. I post every Wednesday. Hey everyone, my name is Catherine and welcome to my channel. Today I am going to be visiting the DMZ, the demilitarized zone of North and South Korea. So basically I'm going to the border of North Korea today. I'm very interested also in North Korean. Just like the mystery of North Korea, I'm going to be picked up at 6.10, it is 6.02, and I'm just being picked up in front of my hotel. I just booked a tour on my own today, so we're gonna solo this and see how it goes. I think it's just a half day, and we are going really early in the morning because that's typically how these tours go. Let's get going and see the border. Nobody can go into the military zone. That's why we only can stay in the civilian control zone. Close the from suddenly midnight. Okay? And um, if you take the shuttle bus, shuttle bus driver never go into the village. But I will ask our driver to pass through the village later on the way to go to the souvenir shop here. About 450 South Korean residents live in this village. Okay? And then after drop by three spots, we go back to Seoul directly from here. And then we're gonna cross the unification bridge to go into the civilian control zone later at 10.05, okay? And then this bridge was built by Hyundai Company. Our first stop on this tour was the DMZ Freedom Bridge, also known as the Unification Bridge or the Bridge of Freedom. The DMZ Freedom Bridge is a bridge that is located in the Korean Demilitarized Zone, known as the DMZ, that connects North and South Korea. The DMZ Freedom Bridge holds historical significance as a symbol of hope for reunification and freedom between the two Koreas. During the Korean War, it served as a vital transportation route connecting the two sides. However, it was partially destroyed during the war, and the remaining section of the bridge now stands as a reminder for the division between the two countries. Today, this DMZ Freedom Bridge is a popular tourist attraction so that tourists such as myself can visit the area and observe the bridge from a distance but access to the bridge itself is restricted for security reasons so you can see the bridge off to the right and it serves as a symbol for the ongoing desire for peace and reunification on the Korean Peninsula. And as you can see at the end there are also ribbons that people have tied for various reasons whether they have loved ones who have been affected by the war or those who simply wish to have reunification and peace once again. Hi everyone! So I am on a gondola and I thought this would be a great time to update you all. There is a little bit of an announcement going on, but it's a Korean and I don't know what they're saying. But I am basically at the border. I'm still trying to figure out everything about where we're going, what we're doing. Earlier, I was walking along the Freedom Bridge, so I might add a little more of a voiceover and info for you all. But basically, it is. In, it goes from North and South Korea and it lets out prisoners or people in North Korea and they get to leave and escape into South Korea and never go back to North Korea. And then they would cross the bridge and shout freedom, freedom. And that is why it is called the Freedom Bridge. And then I just got a snack or breakfast. Later on, we're gonna go through a tunnel. We're gonna do a bunch of different things. I'm on a gondola. So yeah, I'm approaching so I have to put everything away. But it's 9.12 and I'm gonna have to get on at like 9.50 to get back to the bus. I need to be really careful with time because I'm by myself. This is really cool crossing over the bridge. And I won't be in North Korea. None of this is like, I'm not gonna see North Korean soldiers. They said if we see North Korean soldiers, there will be a second Korean war, <laughs> which is really intense. So I'm still, this is all in like the citizen area, like that's open to the public and I need to make sure that I'm not still filming when I need to jump out of this cart. But yeah, that is the update and we're gonna see more on the other side of this river.
made it to the top of the observatory. It was quite a hill to walk, lake day every day apparently when I'm traveling. We can see the river, we can see the gondolas over there, and some bridges as well. All the like informational pieces here are in Korean, but general idea of what's going on here and this pretty blue patio. So that is the update and I wanna head down now. I am now heading back over the river and it's just been a nice peaceful experience so far. It's only 9.46. This is a half day tour. It is seven hours, which seems like a full day, but I did start at 6 a.m. My pickup time was at 6.10, and I did not know that there was a gondola ride included. I knew about like going into the tunnels and an observatory, and some of these tours include like a suspension bridge, but this was a nice surprise. I, I think it's because this was optional, so I paid extra for this, and I also wanted to get the crystal floor. But that is the update. So from what I understand with the DMC, so of course when the Korean War happened and it split up North and South Korea, the UN created the DMC for North and South Korea to be able to, you know, do any sort of meetings, discussions, whatever it may be, peacefully, because that's all about the United Nations. And they also created this civilian area where people like me, foreigners, tourists, whatever, can explore the area and yeah it's been really cool so far and below it's just like kind of this muddy almost like farm agricultural land over the river Headed to the third tunnel of aggression, which is believed to have been constructed by North Korea with the intention of conducting covert military operations or possibly invading South Korea. This tunnel was discovered in 1978 along with others. However, this one is the most visited as it is open to the public. These tunnels highlight the ongoing tensions and security concerns in the Korean Peninsula. The artificial tunnel is very, very steep. When you go into the tunnel, super easy just going down. But if you look at the people who is going outside, you can guess how hard it is, okay? After walking in the real tunnel, when you go outside, almost the same as climbing up the mountain, okay? Gonna be good exercise for you. And the real tunnel is you have to walk like this pose about 10 minutes to go in and out. So you're only protected by three blockades from North Korea. Third, second, first, DMZ, North Korea. This area used to be original DMZ, okay? So only 170 meters apart from the demarcation line in the tunnel. That's why not allowed to take photos. And then we only can travel to, you know, South Korea DMZ, okay? So you have to walk this much for the real tunnel. 
this much for the artificial tunnel underground this much i told you this one is almost the same as 25 floors of the building okay so but there are two ways to go into the tunnel monorail walking but this bus is working tour so you have to walk all through the real tunnel artificial tunnel together and then the total length of this tunnel is this much but it was discovered all the way to be excavated because of one of not quality factors, right? It was here. But a lot of people died in the tunnel because of that dynamite. So he ran away to south and gave this information in 1974. So our military took four years fighting. So first we put 107 boreholes. One day water came out from the water pipe because of the dynamite and different pressure on the ground. That's why 435 meters to the south. But it's connected under DMZ. That's why 265 meters open to the public. Hey everyone, so I just got up from the tunnels. We couldn't film or take photos or even bring our phones down there. They're very strict and the fact that I'm like, you know, feet away from the North Korean border, I don't want to mess with, you know, the rules. So I had to put my stuff in a locker, but that was no joke. My tour guide was, you know, sure to let us know how steep it was. So we went down, if you could see how she was showing in the model beforehand, we went down a not extremely steep but pretty steep especially for how long it was tunnel and it's equivalent to 25 stories so when she said that i was like oh i did not realize there's a monorail option but apparently for my tour we only could do walking and then we had to bend down we had helmets on and it was like you know she said claustrophobic for me i had to like bend like not a ton but like a good maybe like 45 degrees almost the entire time and we walked like a pretty lengthy tunnel to the very end and at the very end it's just like a cut like a couple i think it's like three layers of barricade and then you can see in a little like eye view like to the other side and you could see grass and some land so i'm assuming that was north korea the signs were not in english and there's like a line behind you there's only enough space for like one or two people and then you have to turn around but I looked through and you know, knew that as of now, in 2023, that is as close to my knowledge as a foreigner, you know, like me, a US citizen, can get to the North Korean border, but I thought that was pretty cool. So now I'm gonna try and take some photos and head back to the bus in exactly 10 minutes. Next, we headed to the Door Observatory, which is a common and popular tourist stop for these DMZ tours. The Door Observatory is located on the South Korean side of the 38th parallel, and this observatory provides scenic views across the demilitarized zone. Visitors such as myself could look into the North Korean territory through binoculars, and I found this to be really interesting as well. There is also a North Korean propaganda village situated in the DMZ, and so I'm guessing that is what this is but it was really cool to be able to look through I tried to film that's why it looks like this through the binoculars and I was able to finally get a clear shot you can see the North Korean flag and some people on the bottom walking I was told these are farmers and it was really interesting to be able to actually look into North Korea I had a hard time believing that that was actually happening and this was definitely the highlight of my tour Hey everyone, so I am back in my hotel room. Today has been such a long but good day. It is about 9.30 and I left my hotel room today at 6 a.m. this morning. Thank you so much for watching this video and tagging along with my day going to the DMZ and all the things I got to do. The only thing is I wish we could go into the JSA building, which is where North and South Korea, they do meetings together. And in the past, people would be able to go into that building and you could go on the North Korean side and then technically say you've been in North Korea, but it's been closed since COVID and hasn't opened up. But I was able to do a lot of different things as you saw and a lot of them according to my tour guide had just reopened within the last week or so so that's really exciting and overall it's been great and this tour did not last up until 9 30 just to let you know it was technically a half day tour the tour ended more so around two by the time we got back and then from there i just did other things in the city 
and just didn't get back until now so thank you all so much for watching i hope you enjoyed and if you've been to the dmz let me know or if you want to go i definitely recommend it if you go to korea i just find north korea to be so fascinating and mysterious but also terrifying i felt very safe the whole time so there's no worries about that just bring your passport with you because you need that to be able to get in and out of the demilitarized civilian zone and we technically didn't go into the actual dmz we just went into the demilitarized civilian zone it's all a little bit confusing but we still got very close and i got to see North Korea. So really recommend it. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you in a future video of mine. Bye!